So when you guys get on the water, always adjust to the time of day and time of year. So when I come here, I could go back in my logs, but I, I got this dialed in. I know where I want to be, and where I go, it's not by accident. I know where I want to be. I know the flies I want to fish. I know the depths I want to fish. If there was one word that you could take that would describe your success in still water, you guys know what that one word is. What is the key to you catching fish with the fly? Depth. And the depth is controlled by what? Fly line. The line controls the depth that your fly goes and the angle that it moves through the water. Never assume when you're casting out there that your fly will be the depth you think it is. You have to know. So I've cheated. I've gone out in the lakes and I've gone underneath the water and I have a guy throw the line out there and I can see what was going on. I want to give you guys a little dissertation. This is kind of out of context, but it was so important what I learned. I'm sitting in about six feet of water. I go down there and I can see these fish in about 10 feet of water, about 10, 15 feet in front of me. And all these fish are laying on the bottom. I'm not going out at 6 o'clock in the morning going underneath the water. Hell, I was down on my BVDs and it was cold. I was using this uh, hose to breathe. That was a mask. That was my scuba gear. So I'm down there and I'm watching these fish and they're just laying on the bottom. 10 feet of water and I hadn't come out and we we're testing a new line that I designed for court. And this was a 10 foot sink tip, it was a type 2. And you guys, some of you guys know the answer, but I want you to think about it. Dick, I don't, I don't think you know about what I'm going to tell you. There was no one else running around out there that fishes lights and knows this. When you use a sink tip line, if it's a type 2, it sinks 2 feet and 10 seconds. Okay? Mm -hmm. Say you want to go down 4 feet. How long do you count? Well, it's, it's, it sinks 2 feet a second, so... 2 feet and 10 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. So, 20 seconds. That's right. So here he is. Dick's out there and he counts 20. Makes his cast, counts 20. The tip is only 10 feet long. The rest of it's a floating line. Here's so, a $64 question. Yeah. When you pull this way with the floater, and your tip of your line looks like this. Here's the floating part, here's the tip. The distance from the surface down to here is four feet. When you pull this way on the floating portion, what happens to the floor? Gotta go up. Everybody yeah. says the same thing. It goes down or it goes up. Does it go up? Oh, it goes up. I didn't up. know that. I thought it went up too. I would think it would go up. If it does this. If you retreat, it's going to do this. It stays in this position and it moves this way. Now stop and think of what I just showed you guys. There isn't a guy behind a counter, I don't think in the United States right now, that knows what I just showed you. Because no one would want to make the water. You can do it in a tank, you can do it in a big aquarium tank, you can do it in a swim pool. Test and see when the line goes down and you pull, what's on the end of your line? Tip it, leader, and fly, correct? So off the end of that, here's your fly, leader, and tip it out here. What happens to the fly? When you pull and put motion this way, you control the depth by the speed that you retreat. So if you have an intermediate line that sinks one foot in 10 seconds, and you do this, <coughs> you increase your speed, you're not giving that line a chance to do what it's designed to do, which is to sink in 10 seconds. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So as you're pulling, you can retard the sink rate of any line by increasing the speed. When you use a tip, you guys, this is a no-brainer. Oh, wait, wait, what did you just say though about about that when you the difference between using a sinking line and a, or an intermediate line and a, a sink, sink tip? I just gave you an example with the intermediate. A sink tip line. What you have to remember, Dick, when you look at a sink tip line, you go into the fly shop. I'm going to show you what lines I fish and why I use them. It's coming. It's not out yet. Okay. Not out of here. Okay. So when you use a sink tip line, if you're looking at about you have to consider the sink rate of the tip and how long it is to reach the depth that you want to reach. Right, right. Okay? If you guys go out and on this day, the fish are not feeding in the feeding zone, which is where? Two feet. About two feet and? There's two places on every lake. Every single lake, same two places. 
Top two feet, where else? Surface. Huh? Surface. That's the top two feet. Not surface, surface. Oh, you know this, Jay. My God, as many times as I drilled you on this. You know, Jay's only sat on this thing five years, and the reason he keeps coming back because he fails at it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a slow, he's a slow learner. <laughs> it's like me. No. Shoreline. That's why you go into power that shoreline. You guys, I, I'm just out there. And you're looking for the porpoise and fish. Here's what I did wrong all those years. I didn't have seven foot tip. I had the camel. And I would cast. <clears throat> and because the camel sank quicker, I know the strikes are coming the first five feet. So if I didn't get hit in the first five feet, I sped up my return to retard the sink rate and keep it higher. Because I'm trying to match this guy. And I'm not there. I'm down here. I'm still and then I found out that isn't what's important. It's where the fish is. So if he's 12 to 15 inches down, you guys, that's all the water you have to fish in. When they're doing this, because you're going to find it's going to happen, when you see fish porpoising or taking the insects and you're starting to see rings in the water, this is all the water you can fish in. If you think I'm wrong, just go out and cast and let it drop and see how many fish you catch. I bet you will not do that. I've watched way too many people making that mistake. I go over and tell them, this, they don't have the right line. I, all right, it's a poor substitute, but do you have a floater? Try it with that. You can buy with it just when you catch a main fish with a seven foot tip because it's down underneath. So you can do this with it, right? That's what I was doing wrong. That, 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 that the line will stay at four feet. Is that for both intermediate and for the sink tip? No. Okay, so which no, line are we talking this, about? I said this is a 10 foot type two. Okay, so this sinks two feet in 10 seconds. Okay, so so, so it's a full sinking line. Only the tip. Oh, well, it's a, a it's sink, a sink tip. tip. Okay. The rest of the line floats. Okay. So if the lines are 90 feet, 80 feet of the line is floater. Okay. Just the 10 feet is the tip. That's why they call it a sink tip. Right. Only the tip sinks. And that it's it only it's that fly line that will hold the same depth all the way through. The Unless you go to 30. Now you're down two more feet. Places that fish be on a lake. If this was the lake, this inside area around the lake is one to four foot. Then you got five to eight foot depths and you got ten to fifteen. But we're fishing in an upper bay. Here's the way it is. We're parked right here. You got a whole lot here that's right now seven to eight feet. Most of this is five to six. You get in about 30, 40 feet from shore, you're in three to four. You could find some fish in here, you could find some fish here, and you find a few fish out there. If you're going to chronomit fish, and I, I told him, I said, don't get up in the shallow water, you're on three, four feet. Go out to the five, six feet, because that's where we're hooking all our fish, you guys. When I lined you up with this point and had you go out and line back, that's why you're fishing there. They're holding right in that line. Probably 30, 40 feet wide. The bigger fish. If you go to this side over here, small fish. Down to the, if you're looking at the cars, to the right of the cars, the area down there, those are your 14, 15, 16 inches. Just the way it is. If I went down there, that's all I caught. I went to the far side, I got these. If I stayed in that lane off that point, I got this. So that's why I had you guys stay in there. And what happened? You made me look at it. You caught more fish than I caught. So anyway, so you guys, here's, here's what's important to remember. When it comes to water temperature, what changes in answer to your question, ideally, probably 55 to 62 is about as good as you'll find it. But will it stay that way? No, it's not going to stay that way. Depends on the sun and cloud. Time of day, time of year. So when you start your day at 6 o'clock, your water temperature is going to be cooler. Because it's had all night to cool. Got a factor this in there. About 10 o'clock, the water temperature might come up a degree or two. And you guys, you're not going to think about this, but I need to think about it because I'm asking questions of a lot of this. Here's what I didn't know, but explain to me now 
why I'm catching fish four or five feet down. I did something yesterday, and Rod says, I was trying to explain it to him. We're using a seven foot intermediate sink tank. When we troll it, we're staying in the top foot of water. Maybe a foot and a half, depending on how fast you go and how much line you put out. You're roughly in a foot to foot and a half of water. The fish that we're holding out there that we were catching, they could have been in three feet down in five foot of water, or three feet and six foot of water. But they would come up and take that fly when they saw it above. So it's imperative for you guys to remember when you're trolling or casting, you must, not want to, you must always maintain your fly at or above the level of the fish you're at. So you go out, you don't know what depth they're out of here right now. What depth would they be? What you have to do, you have to explore the top two feet. When I say that's a feeding zone, you guys know why. Why do fish feed in the top two feet? That's usually where the hatches are, right? That's where the hatches stop. The hatches come off the bottom. They got a journey to the top. This is getting way ahead of where I want to take you guys later. So I'm going to hold off on this and I'll explain this to you a little later. Because it's important. We're going to get into insects and presentations and stuff like that. See, I got all day. You guys have your night lights and stuff. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, all right, the reason water temperature is so important, you guys, if it's below 40, trolling and casting between it is not going to be very effective. There's always exceptions, but basically it's not going to be very receptive in the fish's part. When you get between, let's say, under 40 degrees, let's jump over and get 40 to 45. 40 to 40 to 45. They become more active. You catch maybe a few fish on a cast or retreat. Now, if you're on a lake and it's early in the year, you put a thermometer in the water and you check what the water temperature is, and you see, okay, it's 45 degrees. Where do you think the fish would be that want to eat today? Where would they be? Do you have any idea? They want to eat. They're gonna eat. Where would they be? Shallows. This will be in the top. Shallows will be the water. On the edge. They're gonna be right here, guys. Because it warms first. But that isn't why they go in there. They don't go in because it's warm. Any more than when I fish my home lake, it's 70, 72. They can't stay in that, they'll die. But they can feed in it for short periods. But that's the conditions that exist. And four or five feet are stationary. They're not hunting, they're not moving. So as you're pulling the fly and it goes below those that are hunting that are up here, what are you doing? Pull the fly through the zone, the fish are saying, uh, I'm not eating, I'm not doing anything. Uh, they don't take the things moving parallel. They move to the side of the They watch what they do. Not once or twice. I've seen it enough to know when I go in there. So I'm giving you guys the benefit of what I've learned so you don't make the same mistakes. But until you learn this, you don't know that you're doing it. So when it comes to trolling, it's not a tough thing. On a day like today, I learned another <laughs> thing, and I had to teach Vicky this one. You guys, if you're out and you're casting and retrieving, always try to position yourself so that you throw across the room. That's important. Why is it important? Trout feed. You know which way they're facing when they run a shoreline. If they're making rings on the surface, you know which way they're going when you see which way they're moving. When the wind blows, which way the trout face? You know, Greg. Cut them. Yeah. They the wind. Sure. So, if you cast downwind, what are you showing the fish? Fish stop moving. They wait for the insects that are on top to be blown to them and they just come up and take them like in a stream or a river. So if you cast down to him, what have you just done? I know what you just did. How many fish are between your rod tip and where your fly just landed? You don't know because you can't see it. You're focused on where that fish just came up. So you're casting to him. You're using the wind to get it down there. My God, you look so good. It's not the way to go. So you have to cast across the wind because trout facing.